not entertained, ex friends. Are you not entertained? Just because we're working on crazy subjects, very few people have much interest in. It does not mean we can't have a good time. It does not mean we can't have a good time. I raise my glass to you, ex friends, for sticking with a very rambling season. A very not a season, a series. A very rambling series. Because if you've been watching this whole thing, I could easily see like, what in the hell are you doing? Sisyphus, what are you doing? How do all these axes relate to each other and what are we trying to do? So, so before we get to the work axe arena, really got to back up and talk about what the theory was here. Okay, what was the theory I was trying to get um, evidence for? Well, if you did not watch the series, the Efficient Axe series, um, I encourage you to do so. All right, that was another series where, you know, we took a look at the theories of axe design from a very famous author in a very nice book. Put them to work and we tested his ideas and 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 had some some very interesting results that inform us. But in the middle of that, in the middle of that, truly, truly unsolicited advice surprise, out of nowhere, a viewer submitted an axe that he had essentially uh, designed. It was a designed axe. This is not an axe you can buy. He had taken um, some vintage uh, head and modified it into a certain shape to achieve a certain result with an axe which you know which is amazing in the internet age who knows what's possible that was, it was great i was more than happy to throw that in and it was a tremendous axe it was a, a, a phenomenal performer and actually kind of put my holtzbrook american felling axe to shame i can't believe i hear myself saying that but it, it was a very high performing axe and so i thought a lot about why you know why did i like that axe so much better than some of these other axes, which were great too. You know, they were all great too. But And so as I analyzed it and I checked it out, you know, it was a, a thought kick coming back to me about there's a lot of anecdotal evidence, at least online, about, you know, from people who use axes and then go online and talk about them, okay? That's a, a certain subset of people. But how much, you know, they would enjoy, how much that they would enjoy and prefer using a certain kind of axe. And, you know, this certain kind of axe that they kept referring to as being, you know, their favorite worker, their favorite user, had certain characteristics that were very similar to my friend's axe that he had, he had sent. So the long and the short of this theory was basically people who had lots of choices for the axes, they could choose to do like a full felling axe size job. So, you know felling a tree, bucking a tree, that kind of thing. People really liked axes that were a little bit lighter and a little bit shorter than your typical commercial production axe that you can buy, all right? A little bit shorter in length and a little bit lighter in the head. And they seem to really like that combination of features. So that intrigued me, and I thought, you know, is that, uh, is, is that something to look at? Like, you know, and call it the work axe. Is, you know, is a work axe something that's a little easier to handle, a little bit lighter on the swing, does that combination of features uh, produce a great axe? Okay, I just did, that was the idea, that's the theory. So I made up eight high performance axes, right? And most of which you have seen, each had an episode. They range in um, weight from 4.5 pounds at the very heavy end, definitely not a work axe, but will make good comparison all the way down to 2.75. The idea being it's somewhere in there, somewhere in there, there might be a sweet spot, all right? A sweet spot where things and the balance of all the, all the stuff feels awesome, okay? And we're looking for that. We'll see if it's close to three pounds, 30 inches. We'll see, we'll see. Now I added three axes that did not have an episode dedicated towards them. So let's introduce those real quick. The first is um, my super fancy Swedish truck axe really sweet Holtzbrook Swedish Army issue somewhere in the 60s okay somewhere in the 60s Holtzbrook made branded axes for the Swedish Army and the Swedish Army is not huge you know they probably were tens of thousands of axes but Swedish Army is all right very capable and so it's cool to find these with the three crowns that's how you can tell the Swedish Army has the three crowns on the reverse size and they're 2.75 pounds which is a very odd weight for Holtzbrook I made this one up nice painted it all sexy it's really cool. It's kind of my truck edge. I really like it a lot. 
And then I like double bits. I like double bits. They're totally a legitimate axe and a legitimate options for all kinds of applications. And this one is a Wiebelhaas, a Wiebelhaas, an old German company that I now believe never made the same axe twice. Meaning, meaning that their finishes, their finishes are so rough and industrial. It's really incredible. The more Wiebelhaas. Uh, you see, like, they're all different, crazy patterns, huge patterns, and they, they export it a lot. So actually, you find them in Canada quite a bit. So an interesting band, I call this one Wotan, right? Wotan, God of War, all right. Three and a half pounds, 28 inches, actually a cruiser handle with a full-size eye. Put these together. I have a double orange Asajj wedge in there tight as hell and Wotan here is ground down for danger zone trials yes this is a 17 and a half nearly flat grind here on the edge that's extreme and uh, one thing about I like about Weebloss is they seem to have really good steel the steel seems to be great finishes are terrible worst finishes in the world fantastic steel so we'll see how it chops then we have this really great three and a quarter pound Kelly Perfect jersey pattern. One of the latter additions, I think, latter manufacturing makes of this long, long uh, line of axes, the Kelly Perfects. And it's kind of perfect for our needs. This is the smallest of some mini race axes I put together with racing style handles, 30 inches long, and just, just underweight to try to get some of the advantages um, built into racing axes but at much, much less weight. A competitive racing axe is about six pounds. That is a big axe if you've ever tried one. That's a lot of weight. It takes a lot of training to really use that efficiently. And I thought maybe, maybe, there he goes, some smaller weight um, versions of, of those designs would be really effective choppers. And so far they've been fantastic. We'll have all three of them in action during this arena. And the Kelly has the sharpest, most aggressive bit of them all. Way down in the danger zone. So we will see how that American steel holds up at that angle. And if anyone has a better and more bushcrafty solution for nine axe portage, please let me know. I'm using my carry-on. <laughs> Worked pretty well, actually, but is there a better way? I don't know. There's a product idea for you, young entrepreneurs. Go and make one. I will buy one. Nine or more axe portage. But enough of me yakking. Let's get to chopping. So here you go. To the town of our free who rode a stranger one fine day Hardly spoke to folks around him, didn't have too much to say No one dared to ask his business, no one dared to make a slip The stranger there among them had a big iron on his hip Big iron on his hip it was early in the morning when he rode into the town He came riding from the south side, slowly looking all around He's an outlaw loose and running, came the whisper from each lip And he's here to do some business with the big iron on his hip Big iron on his hip in this town there lived an outlaw by the name of Texas Red Many men had tried to take him and that many men were dead He was vicious and a killer, though a youth of 24 And the notches on his pistol numbered one in 19 more One in 19 more Now the stranger started talking Made it plain to folks around Was an Arizona Ranger Wouldn't be too long in town He came here to take an outlaw Back alive or maybe dead And he said it didn't matter He was after Texas Red After Texas Red Wasn't long before the story Was relayed to Texas Red but the outlaw didn't worry, men the tribe before were dead. Twenty men had tried to take him, twenty men had made a slip. Twenty-one would be the ranger with the big iron on his hip. Big iron on his hip. The morning passed so quickly it was time for them to meet. 
It was twenty past eleven when they walked out in the street. Folks were watching from the windows. Everybody held their breath. They knew this handsome ranger was about to meet his death. About to meet his death. There was forty feet between them when they stopped to make their play. And the swiftness of the ranger is still talked about today. Texas red is not cleared leather for a bullet fairly ripped, and the ranger's aim was deadly with the big iron on his hip, big iron on his hip. It was over in a moment, and the folks had gathered round. There before them lay the body of the outlaw on the ground. Oh, he might have went on living, but he made one fatal slip when he tried to match the ranger with the big iron on his hip, big iron on his hip, big iron, big iron. When he tried to match the ranger with the big iron on his hip. The guy I know is here. To the town of Arabia, a horse trained for one fine day. Hollis poked a box around him, didn't have too much to say. It was early in the morning when he rode into the town. He came riding from the south side, slowly looking all around. There was an outlaw loose and running. He came to whisper from his lips, and he's here to do some business with the big guy running his head. Big iron on his head. In the town there lived an outlaw by the name of Texas Red. Many men had tried to take him, and that many men were dead. He was vicious and a killer, though a youth of 24, and the notches on his pistol number one and nineteen more. One in nineteen Now the stranger started talking, made a clean foot smile. It was an Arizona ranger, wouldn't be too long in town. He was here to take an outlaw back alive, or maybe dead. And he said it didn't matter, he was after Texas Red. After Texas Red. tried before we were dead Twenty men had tried to take it Twenty men had made a slip Twenty-one would be the ranger With the big iron on his head Big iron on his head The morning passed up with the eagles hunt There was forty feet between them when they stopped to make their pay. And the swiftness of a quister is still talked about today. Nocturne red and not clear plasteel, four bolt shell barely tore. And the quister's aim was blessed by our holy emperor, our holy emperor. 
was over in a moment and the folks had gathered around. There before them lay the body of the outlaw on the ground. He might have went on living, but he made one fatal slip when he tried to beat the ranger with a big iron on his head. Big iron on his head. you enjoyed that axe friends i did i'm exhausted now but i went back to hit the stump with the high test mini racer and our kelly perfect uh, just great axes these axes are not too hard to handle they're really this is a manageable axe both of these and the kelly perfect like almost a pound lighter um yeah even exhausted uh Great cutting axe. Amazing. I, I love it. I love it. The winner of this bunch, the champion of the work axe category. But there's a lot to say about this. There's a lot to say. I learned a lot. Okay. It was not a day for the Rhinelands. And we had three. I've been using Rhinelands in a lot of the axe arenas. And um, a lot of them, particularly these oxen coughs, have a kind of sweeping cheeks. You see the sweep, the upward sweep, right? It's not a wedge. Okay. And it's not a bullet shaped. Uh, cheek so it, it it flares out and I'm not sure that's doing so well relative to other patterns okay on the mainly soft woods but we did do some I remember some hardwoods I worked on with these axes and it just not quite the same in my opinion um, not quite the same in my opinion as a like a more bullet shaped bit right more curved and convex cheeks like for example the basque axes I think super optimized and and a really innovative um specialized solution for chopping right but the weakness there i pointed out in the video really for me i'm a glove wearer i wear gloves i have to wear gloves i just i'm gonna wear gloves okay haters gonna hate um and it just i never feel really like i've got full control of the basque axe with its you know super thin beach handle um i love the way it chops i love the genius of the design but the handle on the Kelly Perfect was, you know, full-size palm swell, full-size knob, so much more secure. And uh, the way the racing style handles would, would just force your wrists into a good alignment um, produced an accurate swing for me. I felt it was perceptibly more accurate all day long um, than the rounder handles. So there's your work axe champion, the Kelly Perfect, really outstanding i do i love this axe but i could see i really could see how many axemen would not like this racing style handle it is not the most comfortable it's a different feel and i, I, I could actually see people just thinking i'm insane for thinking this was fun okay it's there's a sacrifice in comfort and they're very stiff they're very stiff so it's an unforgiving kind of handle it, it's a very different feel from like a, you know an old smooth vintage thin handle has a different feel it's very very pleasant it's very very pleasant and you'd almost willingly give up you know some power to have that uh, to have that feel in the handle so maybe the quest continues the quest continues but not a chip ding roll or even a rough spot on the steel at 18 degrees all right to draw all that immaculate edge so so good quality in the kelly perfects great axe held up very well very well so what should we do next axe friends i have no idea i have no idea i've lost my mind but i do know this it is definitely time to turn our attention to smaller axes we got to get down into small medium-sized axes because i've got about a gazillion and they need to start 
get me out into the woods. All right, so that'll be our next look here in the series, Smaller Axes. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was informative. I hope you learned something. I learned something um, every time we do this, and I really appreciate it. It's been a great opportunity for me to focus on some things and actually produce uh, maybe some, some helpful findings to you, Axe enthusiasts. Thank you very much, Axe friends, and we'll see you next time.